So the new reality, okay, a new threat is created every single second. In some component, an intrusion happens in every five minutes. 90% of organizations have some form of active malware on their systems. Extremely scary. Last but not least, we did touch on the mobile malware phenomenon. All right, I often do this, and I'm gonna save us from, from this today. I take a poll in the audience around BYOD and your, mo your mobile devices. And the fact that these smartphones are really the key platforms for us accessing the internet. How many of you basically take a look at your smartphone and use it as your primary device to access the internet? It could be your tablet as well. Give me a quick, quick raise of the hand. Access the internet more from your mobile device than your, than your PC. Could be tablet, smartphone, okay? That's pretty much what we see uh, when, when we do a, a quick poll. Typically, most people, and, and I don't know if this is an oxymoron from a smartphone or not, don't often have antivirus or some firewalling or smart browsing technology on that device. So if you think about that, is that really smart when you're accessing social media, your company's corporate networks, all of these things out there without some form of protection on that device? This is what we're dealing with when Ryman refers to bring your own disaster. These devices are getting infected. People don't often understand the level of infection or the order of magnitude. And networks and personal identities are being compromised because we aren't doing the basics to protect these mobile platforms a huge trend that we're seeing out there, and the bad guys know it. They know that we don't have particular protections on our devices. The basic blocking and tackling that we know we have to have on our PCs, we're not doing that from our mobility platforms. Very scary. What I'm gonna do real quickly, and then I'm gonna turn it over to Howard a little bit, I'm gonna frame up a little bit more around what we're gonna talk about today. And I'm gonna come back to really three main components on how we look at this, and it's what we call the three C's. The three C's stem from consumerization, that's your BYOD. It stems from cloud or virtualization technologies. And oh, by the way, kudos to Australia as being probably the leading virtualized country on the planet, okay, with your efforts in enabling virtualization and moving to consolidation. And then the last piece really is cyber threats. That's your targeted attacks. Those three C's are what we believe from Trend Micro are the core areas of focus that we need to be looking at in our enterprises and what best practices do we need to put in place in order to be effective at combating these things. You know, as I started my journey uh, down to uh, Melbourne, it, it really door to door it was 28 hours so I had plenty of time to think through some of these things. It was interesting to hear the concept uh, really around uh, the, the Australian football phenomenon down here, okay, in footy if you will. Tomorrow I get to partake in that. I'm gonna to go to the game uh, tomorrow and watch my first footy game. I'm a huge football fan. I think everybody in this room uh, understands or has some uh, association with footy. So one of the things I thought was interesting is the concept of sevens now. Everybody familiar with sevens? Is really exploding in the US, all right? It's a much quicker pace game and ultimately you're, do, you're playing with half, over half of uh, less of, of the individuals on the team. I tried to draw a similar comparison to give you an analogy within the cyber realm. And what that means is if you go from playing from 15s to seven on the same field, that creates a lot of gaps, okay? It's the same kind of concept now with us doing more with less, whether it's sequestration, whether it's the global financial crisis impacting our budgets. This is all impacting how we do business and the cyber threat, the ever shifting cyber landscape is causing us to basically move much more quickly than we ever had before and do that with less people and less resources. So we have to be more intelligent about how we attack that. We've gotta play different angles, we gotta fill space, we gotta fill gaps. And that's what we are focusing on as far as core blocking and tackling. In the virtualization world, Moving from physical to virtual to cloud. As Sanjay mentioned, many of you are probably re repeat folks for being here. We thank you for coming. This is still extremely important. Many people are still going through this journey. What you see and what we're gonna talk about in our breakout sessions today is diving in a little bit deeper on how you can protect those ecosystems from zero day 
malware attacks, from advanced persistent threats and targeted attacks. All right? These are going to be very, very important. And what you see here are the core tenets of protecting those ecosystems. It's all about the basics of anti-malware. All right? There's still a place for that. We all understand there is no silver bullet. We get that. The anti-malware piece is core blocking and tackling. Signature-based approaches are not going to cut it with this new uh, attack vector and attack sequence that we're seeing out there in the landscape. You're going to have to couple that with some other advanced technologies and weapons to be able to pre be prepared for these types of attacks. And in the physical virtual cloud world and your overall data center ecosystem, you're going to have also things around intrusion prevention and empowering your guests to be self-defending against these attacks. All right? Firewalling capabilities that let you virtual patch against zero-day Java attacks that you may not have a patch for or you may not be able to get to. How are you supposed to improve your operational efficiencies when you're constantly trying to keep up with patches and move the needle when it comes to that perspective? Integrity monitoring, profiling all of these systems to be able to understand what's, what's changing, good or bad, and be able to react, react accordingly. And last but not least, ultimately log monitoring. Understanding what events are going on with you in your environment and doing that continuous probing, probing and understanding of, of everything that's going on. Encryption is another key component. We often talk around data sovereignty and what can we do to protect our data in the cloud, whether it's here, on land, or offshore. Encryption is a key capability to take a look at that. The last piece I want to talk about, and I'm going to bring Howard in in a second, is our concept of custom defense. This is really focused on you, the uniqueness of your heterogeneous environment, and ultimately how you're going to defend against it. This is specifically focused on targeted attacks. We really have this three-legged stool that we have to contend with in our environments. It's the BYOD phenomenon. It's the cloud phenomenon and it's the cyber threat phenomenon. If we don't pay specific attention to all three of these areas and we suffer in one, that's when we become weak and we become compromised. We have to give emphasis to these three legs of the stool. So what we're talking about really is sophisticated network-wide monitoring and network-wide detection. Looking at over all of your protocols, okay? Not just a select few of web and email, all right? being transparent to everything that's going on, looking at mobility traffic, looking at your I iOS device traffic, your Android device traffic. What is it trying to do in my environment? Very, very important. The concept of custom sandboxing is something that really has been evolving over the last six to 12 months. And what that means is it allows you to create a padded cell to detonate these forms of malware that are trying to attack and maintain persistence in your environment. It's important to understand the end state of these packages, the end goal of the campaign, so you can better understand how to create a more defensive posture and a more secure posture through those uh, basically offense informing defense capabilities. Tying it back to a threat network, a threat intelligence big data warehouse to be able to understand was what I'm seeing in my environment happening elsewhere throughout the globe and having global ground truth to be effective and understand how you remediate against that, okay? And basically maintaining a constant update presence around what's going on, how do I be able to be focused on the latest threats and correlate that back into my environment. Last but not least, it's really focusing on cloud intelligence, an adaptive-based security model, and ultimately creating what we call a smart protection strategy. If you don't tie those key things in and put emphasis around the best practices in each one of those tenants or silos, your risk profile is gonna go up. And again, we're not promising silver bullets. Nobody in the security industry should. All we're basically doing is saying, how can you mitigate and minimize the risk in your environment so if something and when something happens, you have complete understanding of the forensics of that event, you know what the damage is, you know how to fix it, and you know how to move on. Okay, minimize the damage. Obviously, it's a no-brainer. Information has become our number one biggest asset. It's all about the data. We're moving it in and out of our private and public clouds. We're making hybrid clouds to be able to move business into the next level. 
We have to be able to focus on protecting that, and this is self-defending. So no matter where that workload lives, you feel comfortable that your policy, unique to you, and the profile of that particular asset is gonna move with it no matter where it goes, all right? So uh, I wanna wrap up a little bit, and I think that uh, uh, that journey through time with, with certainly what Ryman was talking about from a malware history all the way to uh, targeted attacks and what Howard was able to educate us on really speaks to the evolution and the transformation that we've gone through. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll leave you with this, and I want to make sure I'm respectful of our time and our agenda. Many of you have seen what you see up here on the board uh, as the attack chain uh, that most miscreants go through uh, when they're, they're trying to compromise and exfiltrate data from your environment. It's pretty basic, but the, one of the things I want to call out, and, and ultimately uh, it's very astonishing to me, we recently did a report in the last six months coming out of Ryman's group, the Forward Threat Research Group, that really looked at some of the sophisticated hacking crews, not only within China, uh, but Russia. And we basically took a, a perspective of what's going on. How do they differ? How do they similar? The elements of the attack kill chain you see here are often the blueprint in which they go about things. But the thing that was fascinating is you often hear a lot about the Chinese in the news, okay? But our research and our great work that was done by the Forward Threat Research Team really concluded a little bit different story. And the fact that the Russians are certainly an elite class of hacking crew, much like the Chinese, Iran is another sophisticated uh, hacking crew. But one of the unique things that they did was much more stealthy in the, the way they were going about things. And I think we're hearing more about the Chinese is because they're getting caught and using more common tools than often the Russians do. Okay.